Who is God? Why haven't we seen him yet? Is there really such a person? Many such questions are in front of us. Before looking for answers to these questions, let's first have a simple look at Stephen Hawking's concept of God. Since we evolved as humans about 200,000 years ago, they have used God to fill the space for their unknown answers. In those days, when there was no science, they could not find the reasons for thunder, lightning, rain, etc. There is no explanation for how humans came into this world, how water came, or how the world was formed. So they concluded that God created everything to fill in the answers to those questions. Such an age-old belief continues even after thousands of years. It was a time when it was believed that solar eclipses and lunar eclipses occur because God is angry with us. Around 3000 BC, the Greek astronomer and mathematician Aristarchus was fascinated by these eclipses. He was haunted by questions as to whether they were really performed by God. He carefully studied the sky for many years and came to a bold conclusion. He said that the lunar eclipse is not a divine activity, but is caused by the Earth's shadow falling on the moon. He also made diagrams about why solar eclipses occur and the relationship between the sun, the moon, and the Earth. Until then, people believed that the Earth was the center of the universe and that everything including the sun revolves around the Earth. However, Aristarchus highlighted that the Earth is not the center of the universe our Earth orbits around the Sun. Taking this further, he said that the stars are not heaven's light. They are distant stars like our Sun, and because of their distance, they appear small. What a great invention it was at the time. The universe operates according to certain laws that cannot be changed by anyone. Discovering those laws is the most outstanding achievement of mankind. We are constantly discovering those rules. These laws explain to us how things actually work in the past, present, and future. Now I throw a ball that falls precisely where I predict it will fall. Those laws can explain everything from how the force of a thrown ball is generated from my arm to how fast the grass grows on the turf beneath my feet. Maybe if the ball I throw takes a U-turn and comes back instead of going forward, there is a chance that it is God's work. But nothing like that has ever happened. These rules will remain constant. Everything operates under the same law, from the little ball to the planets to the universe. They are also always inviolable. Now we come to a question. You're explaining everything, but does science answer how the universe came to be? The universe was created out of nothing. God may or may not have created the rules for how the universe should work. But even though the universe is complex and multifaceted, only three things are enough to create a universe. The first is matter, which is scattered throughout the universe in the form of dust, rock, water, planets, and stars. The second requirement is energy. If we look up at the sun, we can feel it in our faces. It provides energy to us, even though it is millions of kilometers away. It pervades the universe and is constantly changing from one state to another. Now we have matter and energy, and thirdly, we need space. Our universe needs space for energy and matter to exist, but we have too much of it. It is spread everywhere. Well, now all of these exist, and where did it all come from? As far as Albert Einstein was concerned, energy and matter were not separate. According to his special theory of relativity, he proved that energy and matter are the same. E is equal to mc square. Energy is matter, and matter is energy. Now the ingredients required to cook the universe are reduced from 3 to 2, energy and space. Where did this energy and space come from? The Big Bang is accepted by many scientists as their origin. At the time of the Big Bang, the entire universe consisting of space began to grow, and it's still expanding like a balloon. That is, space formed only after the Big Bang. Everything that happened after the Big Bang was going on without breaking the laws of nature. But what was before the Big Bang? Science says there is such a thing as negative energy. Negative and positive together make zero. That is, plus one minus one is equal to zero. Plus 5,000 minus 5,000 is equal to zero. Or zero is equal to one minus one. For example, a man tries to make a mount in a place. 
He does not need to bring soil from outside to make that mount. He digs soil next to it and makes the mount with that soil. That means he is creating not only a mount, but also a pit. That pit is like a negative energy. Together the mount and the pit offset the positive and the negative. That means zero is the sum of both positive and negative. The same principle applies to the Big Bang, meaning that before the Big Bang, there was zero, nothing. The positive and negative energy split apart at the time of the Big Bang. All the positive energies turned into atoms and became the planets, stars, and galaxies. All the negative energies are bound with space, which is called dark energy. Science has proof of this dark energy existence. Well, even though the universe was created from the Big Bang, who triggered the Big Bang from that nothing? That's where quantum laws come in. Everything we see is made of atoms. And we know that inside those atoms are quantum particles. According to quantum physics, particles can suddenly appear and disappear even from nothing. Even such a sudden appearance and disappearance works according to the laws of quantum physics. Did God create the laws of quantum physics? Science tells us that the entire universe was a singularity, or much smaller than a proton at the time of the Big Bang. So the Big Bang was caused by a particle that suddenly emerged from a place where nothing existed. This can be understood more simply if we look at Einstein's space-time. Every object with mass bends space-time according to its mass. Wherever space is curved, time is also warped. This warped space-time creates time dilation. Extreme time dilation occurs around a greater massive object. As we already know, in the universe, black holes have such gravity that even light cannot escape, and time is distorted weirdly. Let's say a clock goes into that black hole. As it falls inward, its clock ticking decreases. It eventually comes to a complete stop at the singularity point where the black hole ends. That clock does not stop because it stops functioning. It stops because there is no such thing as time in the singularity point. Even when the Big Bang happened, it was a singularity smaller than a proton. So there would have been no such thing as time. Only after the Big Bang did time come into existence. He concluded that God would not have had time to create the Big Bang. He said that the search for God is meaningless because there was no such thing as the time before the Big Bang. So the universe is not created by anyone. It is created spontaneously. This is Stephen Hawkins' view of God. Even though he is a great scientist, can we accept that what he said is right? For example, his close friend John Horgan is a priest in the church. Together they have published more than eight research papers. He never accepted saying, my mentor Stephen Hawking says he doesn't believe in God, so I don't believe in God either. Stephen Hawking uses all kinds of scientific theories to try to prove that God does not exist. That is his belief. This may or may not be accepted as his disciple, John. A believer in God need not hate science, and a science lover need not hate God. Even though Stephen Hawking takes all kinds of scientific theories to prove that God does not exist, some questions still come to us. It is true that the universe is expanding, but what exactly is it expanding into? If there is no space outside the universe, then what is there? What is real nothing? There is no convincing evidence that nothing exists outside the universe. Even the universe was born from nothing. Who created that nothing? We know that nothing can travel at the speed of light, as it needs an infinite amount of energy to travel at the speed of light. So then, is the universe expanding faster than light? According to quantum physics, energy discharge happened before the Big Bang. But who created the energy discharge rule? Well, even if we have the answer to the question of how the universe came to be, what it was created for, and for whom it was created, Many such questions exist not only with us, but also with scientists. Although God may not be necessary for the creation of the universe, I believe the human mind needs it. Sometimes we feel very depressed, and there is no one around to share our troubles and feelings. At that time, we tell God our feelings. We go about our lives with the belief that He is watching us. Perhaps if God doesn't listen to those cries, it will cause even more distress. Most people say that visiting places of worship gives them some kind of relief. And if that is the case, it's better to leave it that way. If a man plans to commit an act of theft, he believes that he will get stuck because if God is watching everything, he will also be watching this theft. As a result, there is a chance that he will abandon the plan. Perhaps if he feels that there is no one to control him, he indulges in evil deeds. We need God's name to prevent man from doing evil deeds. 
As far as I'm concerned, God did not create the Earth or humans in a single day. He designed how the entire universe should function. It doesn't have to be the God we imagine. He may be a person or a group or people living in an advanced civilization, or according to simulation theory, a programmer who has coded how the universe should work. It may even be a being that lives in a higher dimension than us. Science gives various reasons for the formation of our universe, but where did it all happen? Anyone can believe or not believe in God beyond science, but it cannot be completely denied that something created the universe or the Big Bang. If God started it, who created God? Such questions will continue to haunt us even after we discover what lies beyond this universe. <laughs>